Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul once again. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel. As always, please visit me for more videos at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. Today, I want to talk a few minutes about antihypertensives. You see, blood pressure is so common. I mean, antihypertensives, we have so many of them, but always the question is where to start. So, I want to talk a few minutes about initial therapy where to start when most high blood pressure patients we start with one medication so this is called initial monotherapy so initial monotherapy is effective when the blood pressure is not that bad so we start with one medication in so many patients there are certainly indications where you start with two medications when the blood pressure is too high above the normal but in most cases we start with initial monotherapy there are three groups of uh, drugs that are particularly useful number one thiazide diuretics number two long-acting calcium channel blockers and number three ACE inhibitors so these three groups of drugs we choose one of them for initial monotherapy. So thiazide diuretics, long-acting calcium channel blockers, and ACE inhibitors, that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. We usually don't go for beta blockers for initial monotherapy because they have a higher risk of cardiovascular outcomes. I mean, there are cases like when there are specific indications like rate control in atrial fibrillation or controlling a uh, angina in those cases we go for beta blocker but usually beta blockers are not preferred now coming to thiazide diuretics recently we have all hat trial all hat trial revealed that chlorothalidone is actually more effective than hydrochlorothiazide you see so many doctors start with hydrochlorothiazide like 12.5 milligrams or 25 milligrams but in all had trial chlorothalidone has actually shown to be more effective than hydrochlorothiazide when it comes to reducing cardiovascular mortality so among thiazide diuretics hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone you can start with one of these two medications that is the particular uh, outcome of uh, all had trial chlorothalidone is associated with the less um, but the, some risk factors like uh, hypokalemia or glucose intolerance on the new onset of diabetes mellitus so thiazide diuretics have those risk factors hypokalemia and the glucose intolerance and new onset diabetes mellitus so you need to take those risk factors into consideration when you are starting a patient on thiazide diuretic now shorter acting drugs maybe may have some benefits but the problem is when you take a short acting antihypertensive you have to give them so many times every day and that decreases patient compliance to that medication now when you start these patients you should always take their race and age into considerations now let me start like this for if the patient is young they respond very well to an ACE inhibitor or an ARB angiotensin receptor uh, angiotensin 2 receptor blocker let me say ARBs so young patients they respond best to ACE inhibitors or ARBs elderly patients also respond best to ACE inhibitors and uh, ARBs and also if the patients are African Americans they respond very well to thiazide diuretics so thiazide diuretics think of them when you are starting a new medication on young and uh, of, of course all ages of African American patients now hypertensive patients have a specific indications like for ACE inhibitors or ARPs for example if the patient has heart failure or prior myocardial infarction 
are proteinuric chronic kidney disease. They respond very well to ACE inhibitors. In fact, ACE inhibitors are drugs of choice when the patient have these kind of conditions. So, ACE inhibitors are being used so often in patients who have these kind of risk factors. Now, let me talk about uh, the second group of drugs. For example, in a patient who has little or no fall BP after adequate dose of drug 1, you switch to drug 2. If there is no response to drug 2, you switch to drug 3. So, from drug 1 to drug 2 to drug 3. Don't just add medications. So, if uh, drug 1 is not working, go to drug 2. And if drug 2 is not working, go to drug 3. So, switch, switch, switch. That is the most important uh, word here because some doctors they just add on and add on and add on and make the list a long long list of antihypertensives. The key is to switching, switch from one group to the other group to other group like because up to 80 percent of patients they respond to monotherapy. So that's why it's very important to increase, I mean sorry, from switching because you see, patients, I mean, that's normal human beings, we don't like taking too many pills. So it's always important to reduce the number of medications people take because every medication comes with its own side effects. Now, let us talk about indications for a specific group of drugs, ACE inhibitors how they have they improve outcomes in a number of high risk settings and beta blockers improve survival so ACE inhibitors and beta blockers they are very good when the patient has systolic heart failure or prior myocardial infection ACE inhibitors are first line therapy that's why we use ACE inhibitors if the patient has heart failure or a symptomatic LV dysfunction or in all patients who have ST elevation MI and even if there is no ST elevation, for example non-ST elevation MI, if the patient had anterior infarct or if the patient has diabetes or if the patient has systolic dysfunction, AC inhibitors are, are a first line, are their choice of drugs. And also if the patient has protein or a chronic kidney failure, ACE inhibitors are the drugs of choice. And it has been suggested so many times that ACE inhibitors and ARBs have cardioprotective effects. But the key thing is the blood pressure has to be controlled. That is the key. It's not that uh, ACE inhibitors or ARBs have some kind of magic in them. The magic comes when you control the blood pressure using these medications adequately. So an ARB is particularly indicated patients who do not tolerate ACE inhibitors. For example, captopril, lisinopril, all these ACE inhibitors, they come with cough. So patients complain of cough. In those cases, think of ARBs because ARBs equally effective like ACE inhibitors and do not cause cough. So that's about ACE inhibitors and ARBs. And uh, also the other thing is beta blockers. Beta blockers, they are not started as first line, but when the patient has atrial fibrillation, you need to control their heart rate. And uh, also when the patient has to be uh, to control angina. And if the patient has other indications like migraine prophylaxis, beta blockers can be started. Uh -huh.